Now I have the honor to represent the next speaker, and he, he will talk about a very important topic, genetic alter, alteration in Arab women. Is there is a difference? So Professor Nagy Sagir. Thank you very much. Thank the organizing committee for asking me to give this presentation. Uh, I see that people are still uh, awake. I try to make sure they don't go to sleep. <clears throat> My talk will be on genetic mutations in breast cancer in Arab countries. Any difference, I, any difference was chosen by uh, Dr. Hisham uh, in the title. Uh, as an introduction uh, to remind you that risk factors are either modifiable or non-modifiable risk factors. The non-modifiable is one well known to everybody, of course. We have, of course, being a woman, the rate increases with age. Family history, we have either family history with a known mutation or family history with no known mutations. The family history with known hereditary uh, risk um, uh, mutations it could be either in the high penetrance genes, the BRCA, or the other low penetrance genes. Longer estrogenic stimulation, uh, like early menarche or late menopause, early parity and late first pregnancy, the use of hormone uh, replacement therapy after menopause, and we have the modifiable risk factors the lifestyle, increased alcohol consumption, increased exercise, diet, obesity, and others. So the hereditary uh, breast cancer constitutes about 5 to 10 percent of the cases, uh, the familial cases 15 to 20 percent, and the rest is sporadic. And among the hereditaries, we have the BRCA that causes the majority of the mutations and other genes uh, also. Uh, what are the BRCA1 and 2? Those are tumor suppressor genes. They are actually uh, protective, uh, but when they, they help in the DNA repair and stability, and when there is a mutation, a pathogenic mutation, their function is uh, uh, not uh, operative. So we have hundreds of mutations that are reported. Not all of them are pathogenic and the inheritance is autosomal dominant. So how and when to test for BRCA gene mutations? Important before the testing to do genetic counseling. It is important to discuss and evaluate the individual's risk for developing breast cancer, carrying a mutation, and also what are the options, what are we going to do if it is positive or it is negative. It's important to discuss this with the patients. Now, how we... Uh, do the uh, testing. First of all, you need a sample. It's either a blood test or a saliva sample from the patient or the individual at risk that you want to test. Extract the DNA, then sequence the BRCA gene, either the classical Sanger method, which is one by one done, or now with the next generation sequencing, multiple tests, faster, and this has also uh, led now to what we do as panel sequencing, doing BRCA and other genes as well. And after that, you'll have to analyze, interpret, and also reconfirm. Sometimes you make sure that there is no uh, confounding of specimens, uh, important, and also you have to report the sequences found. Now, reporting the sequences found, they could be either pathogenic sequences or they could be non-pathogenic. And there is also a range in between. We have the variants of unknown significance. Uh, there are times where you see a report that is likely pathogenic or less likely pathogenic. So it is a range between the non-pathogenic and the definitely uh, pathogenic. Those variants of unknown significance are very common, uh, and most of them are not pathogenic. So we have to be careful not to over-treat patients who only have a variant of unknown significance. Now, who should be tested? The general guidelines, this is uh, recently taken from the NCI uh, website. Breast cancer patient diagnosed before age 50, cancer in both breasts in the same woman, both breast and ovarian cancers in either the same woman or 
the same family, multiple breast cancers, two or more primary types of BRCA1 or 2 related cancer in a single family member, cases of male breast cancer, and patients of Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry. A more uh, detailed uh, recent uh, NCCN guidelines, the who should be tested, who referred for testing, personal history of breast cancer plus one or more, like age before or at age 45. If the patient is diagnosed at or before age 50, there has to be additional breast cancer primary, one or more blood close relative, one or more close relative with pancreatic cancer even, or one or more relative with prostate cancer, or an unknown or limited family history. But what was added also is that diagnosed, the patient is diagnosed at or before the age of 60 and has triple negative breast cancer, now it's recommended to refer those patients for BRCA testing. What are the characteristics of tumors in patients with BRCA mutations? It's usually a high-grade histology, uh, and the BRCA1, we have triple negative rate in the BRCA1 mutated patients is up to 80 to 90 percent. And if you take patients who have triple negative and you test them, you have 11 to 37 percent chance of being a BRCA carrier, the patient being a BRCA carrier. In BRCA2, we see estrogen receptor positivity, and we also see about 10 percent of HER2 positivity as well. Now, the management of those patients guidelines for surveillance uh, and also the preventive. We have the guidelines for surveillance, adding MRI to the mammographies, starting about 10 years before the first case in the family. In general, uh, preventive bilateral mastectomy reduces the risk of breast cancer by 90%, and the preventive bilateral risk reducing salpangoophorectomy at about age 35 to 40, and usually this is suggested, recommended after completion of family planning, family plans. It reduces the breast cancer risk by 50% and reduces the ovarian risk by cancer risk by more than 95%. And it's important to know that we have to do salpangoophorectomy because the cancer arises not only in the ovary, maybe also in the fallopian tubes. So it is a salpangoophorectomy. So now what to do with the patients who have a variant of unknown significance? There, there is like the association with uh, breast cancer, is it more than the average risk? We don't know, but we have to be attentive to assess the patient, avoid overtreatment, assess the family history, and decide how to manage this patient. Uh, if the lifetime risk is estimated at more than 20%, then we go by standard American Cancer Society recommendations where we do add breast MRI to the screening and we discuss the chemo prevention and preventive surgery according to other risk factors and strong or not family history. Now, we go to the, in the next part of my talk, I will go over the rates of BRCA1 and 2 in general populations, breast cancer patients worldwide, and I also go over what we know about BRCA mutations in Arab countries. Uh, in general, we say about one in 500 of individuals in the general population may be a BRCA1 or 2 gene carrier. Uh, specific mutations are variable, uh, type, frequency, ethnicity, geographic area, variability, and the differences in reported rates is related to study designs, inclusion criteria, detection methods used, but also ethnic uh, uh, backgrounds as well. If we look at uh, the rate in the population, also in patients with breast ovarian cancer, uh, is this working? Oh, okay. So in the uh, uh, general population, we said about 1 in 400, 1 in 500. Now, in women with breast cancer at any age, 1 in uh, 50, uh, it's about 2 percent. In women with breast cancer below age 40, the rate is estimated about 10 percent. Uh, men with breast cancer at any age, about 5 percent, uh, may have a, have a uh, 
carry a, may carry a mutation, and women with ovarian cancer at any age, about 10 to 15 percent may have a BRCA mutation. Uh, if you look at uh, BRCA mutations in patients with breast cancer, uh, according to different uh, ethnic uh, background in the United States and generally, and not only in the U.S., Europe as well, white Caucasians, two point, about 2.2 percent have BRCA1 and 2.1 percent BRCA2. African Americans have a 1.3 percent of BRCA1, higher rate of BRCA2. Ashkenazi Jews have the highest BRCA1, about 10 uh, percent chance of having a mutation. Uh, Asian American much lower, 0.5 percent. Only Hispanics report of BRCA1, 3.5 percent. Uh, now, other population, Arab population, we do not know. We do not have data, large data on Arab uh, populations. Now, if the patient carry a uh, uh, mutation BRCA1 and 2, they have a high chance. Why is it important to check those? Because in her lifetime, the patient has about 40 to 80 percent chance of developing a breast cancer secondary breast cancer as well, also ovarian cancer, male breast cancer, prostate and pancreatic cancer can be seen in patients in people carrying BRCA2 uh, mutation. We have, um, now I can skip this one over just to bring uh, to you that the patients with ovarian cancer recently, uh, we have been moving into testing all patients with ovarian cancer for BRCA mutations because about 15% of those patients, this was a study recently reported from the UK, 15% they have a BRCA uh, mutation. And the Society of GYN Oncology two years ago included a BRCA mutation that it should be offered to all women with ovarian fallopian tube and peritoneal uh, carcinoma. Uh, now, uh, going now back to our uh, situations here, in general in low and middle income countries, that includes most Arab countries, we have about 50% of patients who are below the age of 50 and even 20% below the age of 40. We have 60 to 80% advanced disease, but this has been changing. We have new reports that the advanced stage only about 35% because of all the awareness campaigns that we have been doing. Hereditary breast cancer data is limited. Uh, scarce, only have small studies. Most of the time, patients referred for genetic testing, not real studies, just collecting all patients who were referred for genetic testing. Um, and many studies have been reported in abstract form and not yet published. There's very little data on Arab Americans, which is what's like surprising to me. So a very large Arab American population, we don't have data. So what uh, we will present to you now a study from uh, Lebanon, from the American University of Beirut. It's a study, the uh, BRCA testing was offered to all patients during the recruitment period and not uh, selected. I have here a couple of slides looking at uh, BRCA mutations in Arab countries. We don't have data that is really, uh, uh, say we have different like numbers. You look at numbers from Tunisia, only 32 patients, 16%. Another report, 38%, 10% from Algeria, 9% from Oman, Saudi Arabia, 24%. This was reported at ASCO Breast. Uh, and there is a study from Lebanon that reported 13 percent uh, mutations uh, in uh, high-risk breast cancer patients. So this study, the BRCA1 and 2 mutations in ethnic Lebanese Arab women, we reported this, uh, it was published in The Oncologist uh, in 2015. What we did, the timeline that we applied for a uh, uh, grant from the Ethnic Research Initiative was uh, approved in 2009, was supported by GSK. In 2010, we had an IRB approval. The recruitment was started in 2010 and completed in 2012. Uh, all patients signed an informed consent. We, did the, we started with the DNA extraction and sequencing in Lebanon, and then uh, we, with the next generation sequencer, we were late in acquiring a sequencer, so we completed the study collaborating with Hopkins, but with also Centre Jean Perrin in France. 
with Dr. Bignot and Dr. Urhammer. Um, now, uh, we presented the data at San Antonio and St. Gallen. We just published it last year. Our inclusion criteria were patients who were diagnosed on or below the age of 40. If they were diagnosed, they were below 50. They had to have at least one relative with breast cancer below the age of 50 or one relative with ovarian cancer. Any age with more equal or more than two relatives with breast cancer, any age uh, with two or more relatives with ovarian cancer, and any age if they had personal history of ovarian cancer. Our results, we had seven out of the 250, 2.8% positive BRCA1 mutation, and we had 2.8% BRCA2 mutation. So overall rate is 5.6%. I say only 5.6% because this was lower than expected. This is also according to our French colleagues whom we worked with. Uh, all the uh, BRCA1 patients had a triple negative breast cancer. They had a grade three ductal uh, filtrate ductal carcinoma. In the BRCA2 group, none had triple negative breast cancer. Now we broke them down uh, by age and by family history. If the patient was below 40, positive family history was 10.8%, but patients who were below 40 and no family history, only 1.4% had a, a mutation. The other patients was about 5.3, 5.6% of the overall, because most of the patients were below 50. Now, we looked at the triple negative patients. We had 28 out of the 250, so 11% of the total, and 25% of the triple negatives had a BRCA mutation. This is in line with international uh, data that we know. And if we plot those results into the uh, uh, table that I showed you earlier, so our rate is only 5.6%, which is equivalent to what you see in average patients below 65, but our patients are at a higher risk. So we estimate that our patients have a, uh, a lower than expected rate of BRCA mutations. And when they had a positive family history, they had higher chance of carrying a mutation. Uh, what we did, why, you know, like in Saudi Arabia, they had higher uh, rates, and other places also they had higher rates in Tunisia, etc. So why? Maybe the population in Lebanon is different. We don't know. We did the haplotypes, and actually the haplotypes did show that we have a significant diversity in our population, so which probably means that, you know, Lebanon... Uh, at the Mediterranean, I don't know about Egypt, but we had the Phoenicians, the Arabs, the Romans, the Greeks, everybody passed through. Probably they all uh, settled there, uh, married, intermarried, reproduced. So we have the diversity. We had a diversity. Maybe that is why we have a lower rate, but we definitely need a study in a higher, a bigger uh, uh, population, a bigger number of uh, patients. So this is a summary of the findings that I just mentioned, 5% of the entire group. Uh, the rate rises up to 10% in young age and positive family history. Uh, so this could be used when we want to select patients to refer uh, for the testing, again making a stronger recommendation, young age, uh, positive family history, and triple negative breast cancer. We have to look at this variance of unknown significance. It's a significant high rate, 13%. We need to study those more. Uh, and we also have to look for other mutations. And we just had a study approved at uh, AUB in Beirut also, looking for other mutations. We're doing that the entire panel. Uh, and we already start to seeing patients with PALP2 mutations. Uh, it's just it's very preliminary, but this is something we are looking at. Uh, so here, this is just a slide that I plotted our results with everything else that I put there. So this is a uh, uh, summary. 50% of our patients are below the age of 50. Uh, reports are variable because of variable uh, studies, patient selections and uh, probably genetic diversity. Uh, we have a new study now looking at uh, other uh, genes. It is important, these are like have important implications for the management of our patients. We need in our country, we were really afraid when we started doing the study uh, that patients may not cooperate or 
but they'll be afraid because we, ha we need to have laws in our countries that protect patients against discrimination, insurance, work, etc. if there is a BRCA uh, mutation. And awareness, we need more awareness education to change cultural taboos about uh, those uh, issues. And it's important really that we look at uh, now issues in uh, young patients and early because we have a new studies, although we always say that we have lots of locally advanced, we now are having less locally advanced and more early breast cancer, and we have to tackle all those issues. With just a recent paper that we published that we had, uh, we had uh, more uh, uh, patients 65% yani of patients with early stage disease and we have about 90% survival at five years and 70 to 80% at 10 years in early breast cancer. So campaigns are very important to really uh, make a difference and we need more work to protect if we, we have to do more studies on BRC invitations and we have to have studies, uh, we have to have laws that protect patients against discrimination and protect carriers as well. And thank you very much for your attention.